Welcome to this video in which we'll give you an overview of Reckon One and show you a host of functions and activities in it to manage your business and financial position. When you open your book, you'll see the dashboard which gives you an overview of your financial position. You can change the widgets, the white boxes here, that you see by clicking on Customize Dashboard and pick the widgets you want to see. You can move them around. Some widgets allow you to modify how you display the information by clicking on the spanner. This part of the screen is a canvas and will show you what you are working on. The bar on the left is a navigation bar, which has the functions for the program. What you see here is what you have paid for. If you haven't purchased the specific module, its functions won't be shown to you. At the top right, there are a few other interesting features. The cogwheel, second from the right, gives us access to the chart of accounts and the settings. It's the settings that allows you to modify the look and feel of the book. Quite a few of these settings you can change as you are entering transactions and doing other tasks, so you can make choices when you first encounter them without breaking your workflow. Let's see a few key settings and we'll start in book settings. Asterisk areas are compulsory fields. Without them, the program will not work and you will not be able to move to the next screen. The question marks alongside the fields will give you more information about that field. As emails are sent from a Reckon server, we will want to set an email address for return emails to be redirected. And it's good to mask the email sender with the name of our business or email address. At the bottom of the screen, we want to enter legal details and then addresses in legal address and physical address tabs. Next, go to tax settings and confirm yes for registered for GST tax, if you are registered. And complete the allowable choices. While we are here, you should set the business activity statement options as well. Now let's look at the main functions of the program. Go to banking and bank accounts and make sure you have the bank, credit card and cash ledger accounts you will require. The book is created with a default bank account, my bank account and a petty cash account. To rename a bank ledger account, click on the spanner and change the account display name. Here you can set the opening balance of this account and the date it relates to. And if you wish, your bank details. You will need these details for some functions. To create another bank ledger account, click on Add. For a credit card, set the account type to Credit Account Liability. And enter a display name, like ANZ Rewards Platinum. You can, if you wish, enter an opening balance and its corresponding date. Click Save and Close. We'll come back to the bank accounts when we have a few more transactions. On the left-hand navigation bar, click on Day to Day to see the main functions available to you. It's organised in sections for money in transactions, money out transactions and other functions we call business, which include the general journal. Click on Receive Money to record a receipt of funds. Most input options have an appearance that you see here. You start with a summary screen which shows transactions already entered into the ledger. Click Add to add a new transaction. Enter a date. By default it will be today's date. And a contact. Yes, all transactions must have a contact. Click on Add Contact at the bottom of the list next to Entry Not Here. All you need to add is the business name or person's name that will form part of the customer and supplier database. For casual transactions, customers and suppliers that you have no desire to track, you will need a customer name, so we suggest you create a generic name like Cash Customer, Cash Sale, Default Customer or the like and click on Save. Choose the bank account that will receive these funds. If one bank account will predominate for receipt of funds, then you can pre-select it for all entries in Settings. 
We'll open this in another tab. Go to Money In, Default Bank Account, and select the bank account you want to use. Do the same in Money Out. The amount field has an asterisk, but does not have a box for us to change. The field above, Use Transaction Total, modifies this field and will total what appears in the table below. Now enter the details of the transaction in the table on the new tab. There are several options here, but we'll do a very simple transaction and select a ledger account like sales. The creation of the book gives you a set of simple ledgers. If these are not sufficient, just click on Add Account next to Entry Not Here to create the appropriate account. You can configure it right here, like adding a description and setting a tax code, or come back to it later. You can modify the description in the next field. This is populated from the setup information in the ledger accounts. Next, a tax code. Your selected ledger account may already be configured with a tax code and it will automatically populate here. You can change it if you wish or delete it. Then in the amount field, type in the gross amount of this item of this transaction. Notice how the tax amount is calculated based on the tax code. If there is another item to this transaction, click on Add New Row and enter the details. Click outside the line to save it. Notice how the amount field above shows the total of the transaction. To save the transaction, you have the options of Save and Close, to return to the summary screen, Save and New to open a new form, Save to remain on this receipt transaction. Back on the summary screen, the fields in this table can be modified by clicking on the spanner and click on the fields you do not want to see. Tick the checkbox at the start of the transaction line to see other options at the bottom of the screen, in this case to delete the transaction. You can double click on the transaction to open it and at the top right you will see other options, to print, to set via email. If the contact's email address has been entered on their record, it will it'll populate here. You can accept the default email message or customize it here. This message can be changed in the settings, email settings, invoices, and in the default email content box. The phrase in the angle brackets relates to fields in the specific invoice to ensure the default message is still personalized for this invoice. The receipt is attached at the bottom left for you to view as the recipient will see it. Set as recurring can be used to record receipts that are received on a regular cycle, like interest on fixed income securities for instance. You can delete the receipt here. You can view the changes to this receipt or add any special notes. Make Payments gives you a similar view and similar options. Once a payment is saved, you have the option to attach a document to this transaction by either drag and drop or navigating through your folder menus. Invoicing expands on the receipt structure. Select a customer, and if they do not exist, just click on Add Customer, enter their name, and then any other immediately needed information, like the ABN and email address. Change the invoice date if it's not today's date. Set the payment terms. If the term you wish to use is not here, click on Add Payment Term and create it. If your invoices will have a default payment term, you can set that in the settings, in the Money In section, and open Invoice Payment Terms. Click on the line for the term for your default. Just click on the default box and save. Now all your invoices will start with this payment term. The due date will automatically populate from your selection. Other fields are optional. 
On this display, it shows grace and is greyed out. It has been set to this option in the tax settings. If you want to change it to net, you'll need to do it in the tax settings. The current setting tells us the amounts we enter are gross amounts. Now complete the details in the table. For the benefit of your customer, you may want to use a category of items that allows you to use a better description of the product purchased rather than relying on the ledger account name it will be assigned to. It's also good for tracking sales of items as well. Click on Add Item to open its form. Here you can give it a name. You can make it a sub-item as well. Identify it as a product or service and whether it includes a GST tax. Items are good for buying stock as well, so in the table you can choose whether the item is merely bought, sold or both. We'll select both. You can now define the purchase and sale details. The account is the ledger account this item will be assigned to, like purchases. If this ledger account has a tax code assigned, it will populate. Otherwise, select the appropriate one. Add other information as required. Next, complete the sales side, like your sales price for the product, its assigned ledger account and its tax code. Click Save and return to the invoice where we can complete the line with, say, a quantity. You can apply a discount to this item if you wish. Enter a dollars and cents value or a percentage. It won't apply to any other item on the invoice and will modify the amount for this item. The tax code will populate, but you can change it if you need to. Click Add New Row to add another item. The bottom right gives you the subtotals. Note the discount line does not refer to the discount provided for a singular item. This discount line is for a total invoice discount, say for a preferred customer discount for instance, where you enter in the header section of the invoice and it will apply to the subtotal. You'll also see the total net and total tax amounts. When you save the invoice, you'll see more options to print it, email it, delete it, make it a recurring invoice, say if this were a subscription or a rent invoice, and make a copy if subsequent invoices in this session will be similar to it. There are a few different styles of invoice templates you can choose from Change Templates. Click on Manage and you will be able to customise this invoice by selecting yes or no in the fields in the sections of the invoice if it is to be displayed. A couple of interesting options you may want to use. In the header section, you have an option to add your business logo to the invoice. Just select yes and then find the image on your PC. In the content section, you can modify the amount of information in the table. Of interest in the footer section is the How to Pay option that creates a field for you to enter your payment instructions. To enter those instructions, you'll need to go to Settings and Money In and the Invoices section. In the Summary table, you will see this transaction has a status of unpaid. You'll see columns for the amount of the invoice and for the balance remaining. At the top of the table are some tabs so you can view your invoices in batches of all, unpaid, overdue and paid. And if you have the approval feature switched on, tabs for draft and approved. Notice the drop down arrows in the table header. These are entries to sort and filter features. Features that will be good for collating types of transactions and searching for particular transactions. To receive payment against an invoice, open it and click on Receive Payment. A Payment Details section will appear below. Check the details and make any changes. If the full amount is not being paid, just enter the amount received. Now, 
In subtotal section, you'll see an already paid line appear with the balance due adjusted for the payment. When the final amount is received, just repeat these steps. The balance due is then a zero and a paid stamp will appear. In some situations, you need to give a customer a quote or estimate before they agree to the sale. Estimates allows you to create the quote or estimate just like an invoice. And when it is accepted, with a click of a button, convert the estimate to an invoice. Invoices you receive from suppliers, inward invoices or bills as is more commonly used in Reckon 1, can be entered through money out and bills in the same way invoices were issued. Paying bills is much the same as receiving payment for an invoice. Bills has the scope to attach a document. For transactions that don't involve a money leg, there is a general journal, accessed through day-to-day, -day, business and journals. Key features here are that you must enter at least two lines, at least one line for the debit and at least one line for the credit, and the totals must balance, and you must enter a summary for the entry in the header section. Another interesting feature in the business section is projects. This is a great feature if your business proceeds on the basis of jobs that themselves have a string of income and expense transactions. By tagging them to a project, you can monitor the total income and expense and net profit by that project. It can be used for other purposes, such as setting a special price to be used for a customer or project. Instead of a standard price being used, the project price will be used for this item when tagged to this project. So that is the basics of manually entering business transactions. There are more features in the program to make your job of tracking your business easier. Through the Connect to Your Bank module or bank data, which you access through banking and bank connections, you can arrange to have your bank transactions appear in the book automatically. Automated bank feeds can access the top 12 Australian banks with highly secure direct feeds and the rest via the internet-based provider Yodely Inc. You can access any number of banks and any number of accounts. Each morning, the latest transactions will appear in your book in the Bank Transactions section, ready for allocation to ledgers. If you do not want to use the automated bank feeds, the basic core module does allow you, through the manual upload feature, to upload an export file you create on the bank website and save to your PC. Once the transactions are on the bank transaction screen, they too will have access to the functionality available for automated bank feeds. On the downloaded transaction, select the option Allocate Payment or Allocate Receipt and use the Contact and Account fields on the side to allocate to the appropriate contact and ledger account and click Accept. If the transaction will be a regular one, like interest or service fees, rents, etc., then you can create a rule for it. Clicking on Create Rule will populate details from the bank transaction into the form. You can edit that detail to give a simple name, a clear definition of the rule, usually working off the description is sufficient to identify the transaction, and what the rule will do. Select the ledger account to be affected. You can split the transaction into more than one ledger account if you need to. Back on the bank transaction screen, transactions that need a rule will be highlighted. All you need to do is review the selection and click on accept. As you gain confidence in the system, You'll want to use the Accept Auto Matched option to enter all the highlighted transactions in one step. We are improving the process of entering downloaded transactions in fast coding, where allocated transactions will be saved in the background, allowing you to continue coding other transactions. 
From time to time, you'll want to check your entries to the bank ledger account with the official statement from the bank to ensure the book corresponds with the bank records. Click on the reconciliation option and enter the basic details of the bank statement's closing balance and date. The summary section will show you the difference between your ledger balance and your bank statement balance. The idea is to tick off transactions until the difference is zero, which will indicate that your ledger matches the bank's record. You'll notice some transactions are already ticked off. These are transactions that were imported either by automated bank feeds or uploaded from an export file. As these have been sourced from the bank, the program ticks them off in the reconciliation. If your bank statement contains transactions you did not know, click on the Add Payment button to add them. Any remaining transactions were entered manually and need to be ticked off against the bank statement. There still may be some transactions left unticked and these will represent transactions after the statement's balance date and other transactions, like a check you sent to a supplier and the supplier has not banked that check yet. Click on Finish Reconciliation to complete the process. You'll be given options to print out reports and to lock transactions to prevent unauthorised changes. Reckon One has a powerful payroll module that will allow you to process any pay situation, meet your obligations for STP reporting and super contributions processing, track leave and make payments to employees directly from your bank account. The book has a couple of dozen payroll items already configured in various categories of payments and deductions. If the pay item you need is not configured, you can add it by clicking the Add button and make a selection in the form. Create a record for each employee for all their details. It's a bit like a mini HR system, but you only need to complete what is necessary. Asterisk fields and others important for STP processing, bank payments files and SuperStream reporting need to be filled out. Start with general details, name, address, and always select the state from the drop-down menu, phone numbers, remember to use digits only, that is no brackets, spaces, dashes or plus six ones. When you save, you'll get more tabs, so continue with personal details, employment details, tax details, and if you wish to track and manage leave, the Leave tab to set their accrual rates for various leave items. Finally, create a pay template containing the basic elements of this employee's pay that will appear on every pay run. One off and irregular items can be added during the particular pay run. In pay runs, you create the actual pays. The information populates from the employee's records and you can configure them for the specifics of this pay. Adjust entries, add or delete entries. The super guarantee will be automatically calculated according to your definitions and the correct PAYG tax amount will be withheld according to the configuration in the employee's records. When the pay run is completed, you can affect payment for employees through a bank payments file you upload to your bank's website. You can report the pay details to the ATO through STP simply by going to the single touch payroll section and converting your pay run to a report. You'll be invited to launch Reckon Gov Connect, which is separately set up on the customer portal screen under Reckon Gov Connect. and submit the report there to the ATO. Later, you can forward your super contributions either through an integrated solution with the Superannuation Clearinghouse provider, OzEddy, or create an export file for upload to public superannuation clearinghouses.
If your business prefers to use timesheets, then the Enter Time module will allow you to do that in Reckon 1. Not only reporting employee work times, but where you are tracking and invoicing time worked with customers. If your employees are paying work expenses from their own funds, the Manage Employee Expenses module will allow employees to submit their claims and attach their receipts to the transaction. Reimbursements can be made to employees directly or through their payroll. Reckon One does have some security features. Users assign bundles of permissions called roles. Some are defined like administrator that gives full permissions. And limited, which gives for you only permissions. The employee role allows only access to pay slips, time module and expenses module. You can define your own role, assigning rights to specific tasks and access to specific functions within them. You can be confident that although you can give permissions to a wide range of users, you can protect the privacy and integrity of the book. We enter transactions into the program to get information out of it. The reporting section gives you a range of predefined reports in the Report Centre, organised by categories, with the default view being financial showing you profit and loss, balance sheet, trial balance and general account inquiry. Key categories are payroll, to see various dimensions of your payroll activity, such as a payroll summary for all payments to employees. Other useful reports are the payroll detail and super contributions and transactions. Tax, to verify the tax status of your transactions before you go ahead and complete your BAS. Customers and Suppliers enables you to manage your outstanding invoices and bills. Analytics provides a number of reports that are useful in managing your business. And Advisor other useful functions like receipt and payment lists and transaction reports that can be exported to other accountants programs like Reckon Elite and Handysoft. You have the facility to create a budget for your business to help with your management. The combination of your record keeping is a business activity statement, which you will find under tax. Your reporting type is configured in settings, so you only need to select the reporting period here. The GSD fields populate from the tax codes on your transactions. You should work through your tax reports first to ensure all transactions are properly coded with the correct GSD codes. Other fields have open boxes for you to enter the relevant amounts. Many of these fields may have their own ledger accounts, so running an account inquiry on the ledger account will give you the numbers to transcribe to these fields. At the bottom of the screen will be your obligation to, or benefit from, the tax office. The other available lodgement is a TPAR, the Taxable Payments Annual Report. Originally, this report concerned only the building and construction industry, but recently has, it has been expanded to other industries and is likely to be expanded in the future. To include a supplier in this report, you need only tag them in their record. Check the box for Subject to TPAR. When you create the TPAR report, all suppliers tagged for TPAR will appear. Expand the supplier to see the transactions that have been included. If any transaction need not be reported, you can just untick it. When complete, save the report and then generate the file for upload to the ATO portal. So that's it for Reckon 1. If you need help, there are resources at your fingertips. Here on the customer portal, you have access to the demo book, which is a great place to see how completed transactions are done. Inside the book, just click on question mark icon for links to our other help sites. For how-tos on specific tasks, go to the Reckon 1 Help Centre. There are a number of how-to tutorial videos on our YouTube channel as well. To get serious on learning Reckon 1 properly, go to the Reckon Training Academy, 
where among other resources is a certificate course that will guide you through all the functions available on the module being covered. If you need more help, you can go to our Reckon community and ask a question there. Or you can ask the support team by email or by phone on 1300 Reckon 1. Professional help is available from our cloud advisors, which you can find on our Find an Advisor site. Thanks for watching this video and we trust you will have a profitable time exploring the power and ease of Reckon 1.